Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide. It's a phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 4, Episode 8, titled Like a Hurricane. You know, I'm really disappointed in Miami Vice that there wasn't a hurricane-related show title until now. <laughs> also had nothing to do with like, a mm-hmm. hurricane. Yeah, that, I understand. <laughs> that, that's, that's a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> For a state that's everything else is named after hurricanes, including the U right there in Miami. Such a letdown that there isn't more hurricane-named stuff in Miami Vice. Or any episodes where there's a hurricane. Yeah, damn it, Miami Vice. Very true. (laughs) It's always sunny. No hurricanes. Whether they ever get is that it's really hot. Yeah, humid. This episode premiered on November 20th, 1987. It is written by Robert Palm, who wrote a bunch of teleplays. This is the only episode he actually wrote from beginning to end. He writes a bunch of other teleplays and will be the story editor for the last 13 episodes of this season. So his impact will be felt more throughout this season. Hmm. Do you take that as you will? Hmm. <laughs> I know how to take that. So <laughs> <laughs> It is directed by Colin Buxy, who also directed Death and the Lady. So he's the guy in the porn. <laughs> We found him. We called him out. <laughs> He's got two more episodes coming. So this, we're not done with Colin Buxy. All right, John, this is pretty straightforward. We have two bands, one in the beginning, and then Sheena Easton. What do you got for us this week? Yeah, so let, let's go ahead and get the one in the beginning out of the way. That is MCs of Rap's Domination. That's the song. So MCs of Rap was a group that spawned out of Miami's bass music scene in the late 80s, early 90s. One of several rap groups that spawned out of there with the help of rapper Luke Skywalker. <laughs> From, Perfect. Uh is it Luke Skywalker from Star, oh, Star Wars? From Two no. Live Crew. Two Live Crew. Oh, okay. He's, he's from like, Two Live Crew. Yeah, he's oh, like really? Yeah. I'm yes. like, looking at you like, did you not know that was his name? <laughs> no, I didn't know that was his name. I, I was. That's why I paused for a minute. I was going to let you guys amongst each other because I figured no one would know who Luke Skywalker <laughs> I, the rapper I knew who he was. was. <laughs> Luke Skywalker the rapper, also owner of Sky, uh, Skywalker Records at the time. He was producing rap groups and one of the raps... He he signed was two live crew out of California. He and then he would join suit with them as their producer and pretty much hype man on uh, sh- showing up on the records, including eighty six is nasty as they want to be with eighty uh, nines. Luther Kimball's, aka Luke Skywalker's record studio, would go bankrupt in the nineties after he would be sued by George Lucas for using the name Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Who saw that coming? Yeah. So now I could sit and I could talk more about Two Live Crew, but they're not actually the ones who did the song. MCs of Rap did the song. MCs of Rap members included Calvin Pete, aka Cool CP, Don Saunders, aka Dandy D, and Raymond Cox, aka DJ Cox or Cut Master Cox. <laughs> <laughs> they actually disbanded in 1990. They released two albums, Ain't No Stopping Us Now and Gotta Be Funky, and, but they really never really got a whole lot of fame. Now, other people coming out of that Miami bass scene would eventually become famous. At the height of the Miami bass scene, You, uh, it would produce artists such as 95 South, Tag Team, 69 Boys, and the Quad City DJs. You know... All those those really big <laughs> names, right, guys? Yeah. Okay, all right. So like- you may not recognize the name of the names of the people, but you'll probably recognize the names of their songs. We yeah, have ninety threes. Whoop! There I it is. I, I was gonna say, like, I think I could string them all together into a single sentence. Like, whoop! There it is. Someone let the dogs out. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to remember the last there's one more song I'm blanking out on. It was Whoop, There It Is. Whoop, There It Is. So there was two different ones, almost <laughs> identically named. There was Tootsie Roll, my I favorite, say, 94. <laughs> uh, yeah, by the 69 boys. Let me see your Tootsie Roll. <laughs> um, and then Come On and Ride It, The Train by the Quad City D- DJs. So there uh, actually some hits did come out in the early 90s from the Miami bass scene. So now let's shift focus and let's talk about Sheena Shirley Easton, who plays Caitlin Davies in the show, but also gave us 
I Got You Babe, the share cover, and When He Shines in the show. She's a Scottish singer, songwriter, and actress. Now, John, before you continue on, I have to say, I I have no idea who Sheena Easton was. I recognize the name, but I didn't know. I have no idea who she was. And in my head, I pictured, based on the name, a Paula Abdul-like person. (laughs) And then I saw Sheena Easton and saw that she was from Scotland. And I was I was surprised to say the least. Now in my head, I still picture Paula Abdul. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I did not I had heard the name Sheena Easton, but I did not know anything about Sheena Easton either. And I went into this thinking that she was some kind of country singer, and then I find <laughs> out that she's Scottish. I realized I was way off. <laughs> So I'm in the same boat as you. <laughs> so. Well, I knew who yes. she was and I didn't like her music. So there. No, <laughs> I knew who she was. She sounds like shit. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so guys, Sheena Easton is like the first reality TV star. Like the original, the first one. <laughs> she first came into the public eye on the first British music reality TV show ever. The big time dot up singer she recorded her attempts to gain a record contract over the course of a year. Interesting. And I know that they've had yeah. there's a there's a music competition that's been on TV for decades. That's in Europe. I forget what it's called, like the Star or something oh, like yeah, that. No, everyone watches it. Yeah, yeah. Like Euro Star or something. Yeah, like that. and but this is interesting that this was just about her. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and this is like 1980 when when she was on here, like 79, 80. So, like, this is like the first one. And then she wouldn't get a record contract while she was on the show. It wouldn't be till after show. She would get picked up by EMI. She gets a record contract after the show. And she records her first hits, Modern Girl and Money Train. And they, they charted so well and her career just took off. And she would also have a top 10 hit in both the U.S. and U.K. in 81 with a the James Bond theme for your eyes only, but actually also win her a Grammy, her first Grammy for best new artist. But by the end of 1982, sales start slumping. She would actually be one of the first people to record what would become eventually a uh, Bette Midler hit, the song Wind Beneath My Wings. Hmm, interesting. In 1984, she would go a little bit more sexy dance siren than pop star, and her success would fade away in the UK, but it would continue in the US. And she would actually become one of the first artists to have her music video banned because of the lyrics for the song Sugar Walls. Sugar hmm. Walls was said to have been written by Prince under the pseudonym Alexander Nevermind. That is the perfect pseudonym for something that Prince would come up with. Exactly. Like, Prince, we don't think you should put your actual name on this. Well, fine then. Never mind. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Never mind. So, and, so if that's not crazy enough, sometimes we find connections in our music. Well, this has a connection to two live because... That would put her on Tipper Gore's list of the Filthy 15 as head of the PMRC. It was basically Tipper Gore was spearheading the parental advisory. One of the Filthy 15, Sheena Easton's Sugar Walls, also one of the Filthy 15, pretty much anything Two Live Crew ever did. Yeah, there's nothing safe from Two Live Crew. I'm pretty sure they just wrote Two Live Crew on there. (laughs) <laughs> so, but that song Sugar Walls would actually get her to number three on the R&B charts and number nine on the Hot 100, and it would not be the end of her working with Prince. In 87, she would do sing a duet with Prince called You Got the Look, which would score her some Grammy nominations and get up to number two on the charts. And then she would also do a duet for 89's Batman soundtrack with Prince. So, hanging out with, with the legend. <laughs> Wow. I think they dated. I think they dated for a while or something. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty Prince hit that. By her Vice appearance, once again, popularity was kind of middling. So Vice actually spiked her popularity quite a bit. Actually kept her going until about 91 when her album What Comes Naturally came out. And that would actually be her last album to chart in the U.S. That doesn't mean that she has stopped working. She actually, she's still putting stuff out. Coming to, this to day, the Merced but... County Fair this summer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, yes. 
but this is where her, her work would kind of change. And part of that is because in 95 and, and, in, and then again in 96, she would adopt kids. And so she would kind of only work part time after that. She also started doing a lot of work for cartoons. She provide songs for All Dogs Go to Heaven 2. It, also, the All Dogs Go to Heaven TV show and Christmas special. Fur and Goldie, The Last Rainforest, and the movie Shiloh, which is about a dog. It, so it's another kid's movie. The device connection alert. Um, she also voiced several characters on the animated show Gargoyles. Weird. Oh. There's lots of tie-ins together here. <laughs> yeah. In 92, I just want to mention in 92, she actually acted on Broadway uh, opposite Raul Julia in what would be Raul Julia's last stage appearance in the Broadway play Man of La Mancha. Hmm. Um, she's got more range than I anticipated, like what she's involved with. Yeah. Um, I expected her <laughs> to be a pop 80s hit. And then by the early 90s, she'd be done and on with her life. And But no, she's been she's very di- diversified. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She even provided voice for the character of Anna of the Shadows for the PC game Planescape Tournament. She currently resides in Vegas. Her kids are grown (laughs) and uh, she has survived four marriages, but just barely. (laughs) Barely. (laughs) And there's your music. Well, let's. I knew we, we, we were coming into some stuff with Sheena Easton because I didn't know anything about her. And also knew she was kind of big time, so there's going to be lots of stuff that I was going to involve with her. And, I'm, and I don't think for a minute we're done with Sheena Easton. Facts, John, I think you're sitting on some because you know she's going to appear three or more times. Now be holding yeah, out she's on gonna, me, man. She's going <laughs> to... <laughs> She's going to continue to appear, and so there are certain things that were left out because I need something to talk about later. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. As always, we would love to hear from you. Email us, goWithTheHeat at gmail.com. Tweet at us, at go with the heat. Get us on Instagram. Go With The Heat on Instagram. Facebook, facebook.com slash go with the heat. You can find us all of those places. We've had quite the debate on Twitter of people relating to our opinions about missing hours. <laughs> so if you'd like to join us, come hang out with us on Twitter at go with the heat. Get us on Facebook, facebook.com slash go with the heat. Email go with the heat at gmail.com. Be sure to review the show. That would be amazing, fantastic. We would love you. You would be our best pals ever. Please go review the show on your podcast platform of choice, preferably iTunes. Just if I if I have to pick one, please go review us on iTunes. That's kind of the catch all for them that that would perform the best is on iTunes. But, you know, you do you do you wherever you get your podcasts, you listen to them on some other app I'm not mentioning. Please review us there. That would be a big help. Second way you can help us email go with you to gmail.com. Third way. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. See what other things we want to make before the Miami Vice run is over and we start to evaluate what the next show we're going to do. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, pals.